welcome back to the shed. Well, big change for today. We're gonna take Jordy out. Well, the reason we're gonna take her out is because we have to spin her around and uh, do some work. The work we're gonna do this week is reestablishing ground tackle on this boat because this had had the uh, windlass that is now on poem last season and it is staying on poem even though it would be a drop in here but no 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 it's time to rebuild a new um, bowsprit for Jordy and set up uh, for the new beautiful uh, windlass and that'll be a treat for you in just a few minutes but first gotta turn the boat around incentive would certainly be this little gem here which is a classic Pacific Northwest mainstay in the anchor windlass department this is a McMurray uh, classic classic made in Seattle a uh, very very heavy duty the exact same windlass is on MV Zephyrus now there's a lot to do here let's let's get into the nitty-gritty to replace uh, the plywood. I have uh, some marine ply and I have just enough to do it. Um, underneath here there's also a heavy timber that was set in to, um, I'm not sure if it's called the breast piece, but a big heavy timber that's across here as well and I, that all has to be rebuilt and it solves the problem of all these holes up here and there's really nothing left to do but take it apart. Now here's the one problem, the uh, tow rail uh, is in the way. Come have a look at this mess. Because it's gotten wet for years and years yeah. and years and years. No good. No good. Anyway, so I'm going to have to replace this whole section of deck. Mm -hmm. And to do that, I have to take this section of the okay. uh, tow rack off. Anyway, I've got to get some better tools on here.
a very accurate scribe, but it will give me a rough idea of where to go. for a little bit and move on to that center support piece there. All right, so I've just cut this lovely piece of sepilia mahogany a little bit longer than the hole and it'll provide the support under here and tons of massive structure for that other piece in here. So what I'm gonna do to be able to cut the top of it, describe it to the deck, I'm gonna put a little piece of wood under here and a little piece of wood under here that I can now use this compass, beautiful compass, to scribe the curve into it. Cutting out of the top in this case, and I'll set it there. And the trick now is to keep this perfectly vertical as I slide it along here. saving this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful big piece of 11 and a half inch wide Sapelli Mahogany for just this purpose. Um, it's a lovely piece of wood, but it's exactly the right thing for it. But the first thing I'm going to do is take two feet of it off to make this understructure. The balance, the other six feet will be the big bow spread that will be up on top. There we go. So this is basically gotta go from right there to right here somewhere. I decided I'm just gonna clean these edges up a little bit. Now to be fair, there's tiny uh, edges on here I have to take off because of course there's a camber to the deck. So I'll just take them off uh, roughly. I don't have my power plane right now, but I just wanted to get an idea of what I'm gonna do up here. And I think I, think I have a pretty good idea.
It's late and the next step requires a level of precision that I'm not sure I'm up to right now. Shower and dinner. Tackle this in the morning. It's going well though, I'm really pleased. Well, good morning. Mm. Feeling refreshed and enthusiastic to dive into this little bit of uh, jointry here. And I'm gonna cheat and do it all uh, with a fine tool. I think that'll be plenty handy. I'd say that actually fits very, very, very nicely. Uh, now all I need to do is ease this edge here. Uh, as you can see, it was eased here. Okay, so the next little project is this cleat, which has been the mooring cleat for the boat. Uh, and uh, I've never really liked uh, the way it was set up. Of course, it's loose. Um, and it has two long bolts that go through uh, into a deck beam. All right, it appears it's the nuts on the bottom are really, really on. Uh, so we're gonna try a different technique for this. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to split the, black, the back of this block off and uh, cut the bolts off with a grinder. Now I have to decide how it relates to the stem. I love that this boat has a stem. Um, some other boats of the same era, I see that the stem has been cut off, which I think is a, a, a real shame. Uh, this is 11 and a half inches wide. So if I was to put it absolutely, there we go. If I was to put it dead center, and then cut a notch in it here so that it would slide around uh, the stem. I then could put the not so lovely but very functional bow roller on here and there would be enough material on the edge to at least put a little bit of an eased edge or something like that. So it is in fact the most straightforward approach to just slide it through and have it like a fork so that there is a projection on both sides. Um, now you might say, well, the anchor's only on one side. Why do you bother with one on the other side? Well, the other side of the windlass does have a drum on it for rope. So there may be a situation where I just want to put a roller on this side, not a big bow roller assembly, but some kind of roller for line uh, in case I'm having to haul something or if I'm pulling something, I'm using the windlass as a rope. Other, I mean, as a rope drum. Um, I don't think I'd ever set up the boat for twin anchors. They're really too close to each other up here. They wouldn't really make sense. So I think it still makes sense just to cut this into a notch and slide this out. Now, unfortunately, this section of sapwood is a, uh, is a real big deficit. Um, there's a big hollow here as well as the sapwood itself. So it might change the way I set this up. Gotta think, gotta think, gotta think. Okay, so here's the structure below. As you all know, there's a heavy beam in here. In fact, it's doubled now because of the one I put in. 
there's a beam right here uh, that the old cleat was put in and you can see I've marked back here there's another beam there and I want to be able to catch all of these with the new bowsprit so it's got to go at least that far back now the problem is as I just mentioned there's this nasty chunk of sapwood um, uh, that starts around 24 inches from the back so I'd have to put it if I was going to catch that last beam, I'd have to do something from about here. And I think I have an idea. I think this will end up being a nice big elliptical curve at the back. Uh, very much echoing the kind of curves that are on uh, the windows of the boat. So I think that'll work out. So it's got to go about to there, which gives me lots of material up front to be able to do my bow spread. Um, exactly how far this is going to stick out uh, also needs to be determined. Let's have a look at that. So if I take this bowsprit off and I put it beside, and uh, there we go. Um, this is all about making sure that the anchor doesn't bite the hull on its way up or down. So if I suck it out that far, well, you can't see that would be plenty. So the reason I've got to do this is because I got to get it right on. So I'm going to move it back a little bit and I'm going to go get the anchor. Okay. Here is a nasty 20 kilogram Bruce style anchor that I've had on Jordy for the last couple of years. I'm not going to say this is a fabulous anchor. In fact, the much lighter um, earth spade that is currently on Poem I used on the boat last year and it worked much better. Anyway, let's uh, not have this all fall all over the place, but put it in place. Okay, that's in the stowed position. And that is plenty, plenty far forward. So I'm gonna just move this back a bit, about to there. Oh, it's windy, it's really windy. Okay, I'm going to move you down so you can see what's actually going on. Okay, so at this point, never mind that the, the stem brace is actually loose here. Um, you can see that there's plenty of clearance, but the clearance I really care about is during deployment. Watch how it rocks back when it starts to deploy. See that right there? Bit too close. Yep. So we got to come back out a bit. Let's say there. Let's try that again. Can you imagine trying to do this in the water? I mean, without the dock. Okay, right about there, right there we go. I can't imagine that that is going to give me too much trouble. Okay, for now, I'm gonna call it there. Which I'm sure, oh, don't drop that in the ocean, Peter. There we go. Um, I'm going to edge a little bit further out just to be safe and I'll tell you why. And that's that this janky stainless steel folding bow roller which actually works the biz, I've said before, from the face of the uh, wood uh, bowsprit to where the first roller is, uh, let's say is roughly five and a half, six inches. Um, now if I was ever to find and beautiful bronze bow roller, which probably wouldn't do with a tippy flippy, but that's okay. Um, the roller is likely to be much closer in to where the end of the bow thread would be. So I think I will make sure that I air on the slightly too long here and uh, we'll call it about there. Okay, this should be kind of fun. This is the aft end of the um, bowsprit, and I'm gonna set up for that elliptical cut down here. And um, I think I'm gonna use an age old method uh, that works quite well. Uh, five, uh -huh. And that's to draw the ellipse with a, a loop of string. And uh, this works out really well 
Uh, usually. <laughs> Years and years ago, when I was uh, building custom homes, I would often have to do a big elliptical curve for a uh, archway or something like that, and this is the technique I would use. Okay, now we just need two screws at exactly the right place. And they are from this mark, which is going to be the very end of this, at one inch. Oh, the wind is bouncing this boat around. And 25 and a half. And then two screws. This is the back side, so no screws on the top. And a length of string that has been pre-calibrated elsewhere. All right, so basically you just take your marker and I'm gonna start slightly in because of this uh, punky uh, sapwood here. I'm going to start my elliptical curve in about a quarter of an inch so that I can come up and put a very gentle curve up to that quarter of an inch. So um, it just is about how much stretch I put in this string. And it's hard to get exactly the right, especially when the boat is bouncing all over the place. Okay, here goes. One elliptical curve, just like that, magic. And it's tomorrow. Okay, well, I'm really pleased with the way this is going, but I was doing some other work in the shop last night, and I determined that I think the tail end of this needs to have a bit of a slope down there, easing to a just a slightest slope up here as well. Um, I, I'm gonna play with that a little bit, but I'm 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 really pleased with it. A little more, a little more, a little more. Yeah. Bye. There we go. Okay, it's time to look at easing the edge and it's a bit complex and I'll tell you why. The bow roller, which is gonna sit up here, right like that, just about, just about. Um, here, I can't have very much of an easing, you can see, because I only have oh, a strong quarter of an inch of, um, of bowsprit left. So, we have relatively easy easing here. And then I would transition to more easing through the main part of the um, bowsprit here. And then I do have to deal with a deficit here, but I think that will easily be uh, looked after by the easing. And then at the back, maybe quite a bit. So, I think... Even though I was going to route this uh, with two different router bits and have a rather obvious transition here, I think what I'm gonna do is just sand the entire easing and basically go from uh, fairly gentle up at the front um, to a little more uh, substantial at the back. Anyway, the nice thing about doing it by hand is that there's no chance of a blow at this little situation and I can also just adjust it as I go. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so when easing like this, I start with just putting a 45 chamfer on the edge because uh, that gives me a good idea how big the final easing is going to be. And as you can see, I've largely dealt with the deficit here. I will probably, when I take the bottom off of that, that'll be fine. And I brought it right down to something fairly small up here. I'm feeling pretty good about this. I kind of like the way it looks. Making myself surfboard is what I'm doing, I guess. <laughs> And then just break the edge on the bottom to avoid any chance of splinters or splits or anything like that. All right, so the next thing I need to do is hollow out the back a little bit. Um, of course, the cabin top is, not that the foredeck is curved, uh, but the bottom of this is flat. So we need to put a bit of a concave curve into this. Now it doesn't have to be perfect because this will also be bedded in sealant, uh, but let's at least keep it from rocking on the middle here. And so I'm gonna get started with that with the power planer.
All right, let's see if that sort of feels right. You can see it fits beautifully right here, but back there not so well, because of course the deck isn't perfect. Well, it's not as perfect as my little bowsprit is, but uh, I'm not too worried. Again, this is going to be set in bedding. Um, so I think if I just take the, um, the cuts I just made and even them out with the sander, I'm going to be pretty close to, you know, on the whole being pretty pretty close uh, and we'll let the bedding look after the rest of that I'm loving it, loving it, loving it. And well, I hope you're loving it. And if you are, please consider subscribing and sticking around. If you really like it, how about a thumbs up or a share to that friend of yours who may also like it. And best of all, if you're really, really loving it, how about uh, considering supporting the show through PayPal or Patreon, links are down in the description. Well, this turned out at just absolutely fabulous. I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled. Um, there's lots left to do, but that'll be next week. But on the whole, this has all come together very, very, very nicely. Now, <laughs> what I have to do now is take it all apart and measure for all the fasteners I'm gonna need. I'm gonna need some big bolts to tie in that big timber that's under there and some other stuff. And then of course some huge bolts for here and here and here and here and back there. So I'll get an inventory of all of those as well as this piece of plywood and some fiberglass and we'll pick this up again next week. Now, some of you may have noticed one rather glaring omission and that's, well, where is the chain going to go, Peter? There's normally, well, there's normally one of these right about there and this is a lovely one that I was able to pick up, use bronze, lovely shape, but it is much, much too big for there. Um, there's the potential of trimming it down or whatever, but I really just have to wait until I can find one that's suitable. And if I have blundered, and indeed I need one this big or whatever I find is too big for this, I'm going to have to graft in a little piece on the side here. Um, I was prepared for this all along, but I really didn't want to have to. So we'll see what I can do here about some sort of um, uh, chain cap. And, uh, but I think in time that'll work out just, just fine. Anyway, again, super, super pleased. By the time I get the Chris Craft hatch on, which I have, uh, by the way, um, that'll tidy all that up. And well, <laughs> new windshield and new cabin sides and new fiberglass. And Welcome to the Travels Journey Beer of the Week, coming to you this afternoon from the cozy wheelhouse of MB Poem in downtown Victoria. And it's nut bar crazy here today because it's Victoria Day weekend and this is the tiny little moment where it was quiet enough to do this. So we should get on with it. We should. Start with the beer. Okay. Now this was a gift. It was a gift. Yes, someone in fact, it for us. someone Very left lovely. it for us. Uh, and that someone is Jane and Paul Giffen. Thank you ever so much. They also left a lovely note and they left it um, at the marina. Thank you ever so much. And uh, uh, this is from Sailfish Brewing Company uh, and it's called Sunrise City IPA. Um, and it's front brewed by Selfish, uh, sorry, Fort Pierce, Florida. Yeah. So it's all the way from the state. So it's a. That's pretty impressive. It's an import. Yes. So <laughs> thanks so much again, so much. Uh, Jane and Paul, for bringing this up for us. Oh, yeah, I can use beer. You, you need it. I can tell you, this has been quite a day. We're trying to get an awful lot done. Um, 
It may not be obvious from the show in the last little while, but we are approaching that period where we are kicked out of the Causeway Marina here in downtown Victoria. Yeah. And we have to move all the boats around, so that's Poem and Zephyrus have to leave here. Um, we're going to take Zephyrus on a haul out. You didn't do very well there. Sorry. Oh well, we'll see. Anyway, <laughs> enough of that. Let's have a beer. Cheers. Cheers. I'm okay with that. Whoa. It's more his style than my yeah, style. Yeah, it's it's sure. it's it's a hoppy IPA, yeah. but it's really yummy. It's almost but, a hazy. Yeah, I really really like it. And we have a few more. Yeah. Thanks again. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. Anyway, yeah, so just a quick follow-up on, on what we're trying to get done because Jordy's going to have to leave the shed uh, while we put Zephyrus in for a while. That's after a Zephyrus haul out, which will be next week or the week after. Yes. I can't even tell in the timeline when that is. Um, and we do have something special for you next week mm -hmm. or the week after. We're going to do a week in the life. We are going to shoot everything we do from Monday morning to Sunday night uh, because it's going to be a crazy week and I thought it'd be kind of a fun week to do it. Are you up for that? Everything. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. So uh, with no new supporters in this last week and uh, nothing coming in from the Amazon list, we can go straight to the word of the week. As you know what we haven't done. A what? Here I'm trying to give away a new shirt and I haven't even awarded last week's oh, shirt. No. Moving too fast. Last week's winner of a Travel uh, Journey t-shirt is Daryl Gardner. Daryl Gardner, 2680. Congratulations, Daryl. And uh, get a hold of us via sending an email off to swag at travelswithjordy.com and we'll make sure you get your shirt. Jumping all the way from the top of the page to the bottom of the page <laughs> is the word of the week for this week and it shall be... Bouse Brett. Bow spread, which is what I've been making for a week. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And isn't it nice That's and shiny and pretty? Oh, I am so pleased with yeah, it. Yeah, you did a really good job. This coming week, we'll see if we can button that all up so the boat can actually go out and anchor. Yeah. Important. That'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, you all. Cheers. See you see then. You Hey.